Saquon signed a new deal. Hooray, hurrah, yippee, firework emojis, all of that. Uh, and I've got thoughts on that. And now on to Josh Jacobs. You've got your training camp headlines, everything that's going on, and some fun news with us here. So stay tuned for that. And uh, no big deal. We have two Super Bowl champions, casual guys. We have uh, former Broncos TJ Ward and Malik Jackson popping by. Look out, Cam Newton. Keep your head on a swivel. This is up and Adams, not rebranded or renamed to H or B or G or T or V. It is up and Adams, and it starts now. Happy birthday. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah to Giants fans, guys. They wake up this morning. I did on the West Coast. So I think maybe people were up on their Pelotons. Ellipt Are Pelotons still a thing? Not really, right? Ellipticals, lifetime fitness bikes, whatever it is. Uh, and they found this amazing news that Saquon Barkley has agreed to a one-year deal. Yeah! crowd goes wild. What does this mean? It means he reports to camp. That's so exciting. And he's still not able to sign a longer extension because it's past the deadline, of course, but he was able to sweeten the pot a little bit for himself. And that matters, people, because it could have not happened at all. The windows closed, the deal's over, hold out, schmold out. He would end up losing money if he held out from camp. But Shefty says the deal is fully guaranteed for the same amount as the tag, but he has the chance to earn up to a million dollars in incentives based on rushing yards, touchdowns, receptions. There are some people at the Art Stapletons of the world saying that some of those incentives are tied to Giants playoff appearances and sort of all of that. But we have Dan Dugan joining us in a bit to give us um, all of the details as he is with the Giants, covering them for the athletic and knows uh, the nitty gritty better than I do. But this is exactly what I said yesterday. Is it the most lucrative deal ever? No. Is the bet, you know, Saquon jumping on his bed? No. But he rented uh, a house he didn't love, and the the you know landlords are throwing in a heated pool and a, a month's free rent, and maybe they're taking care of the electricity for a little. It just made it a little better. He's going to be a less disgruntled tenant. And he's putting himself, as I said, just put yourself in the best position to maximize your value and make the most money. Get the most money you can and control what you can control. So he's going to get his earnings. He's going to get in the building, which is amazing. And for that to happen in this woof running back market, he got what he could, okay? The giant side, I mean, they just make it happen. They didn't have to give up much more. They now have uh, a leader, a stud, and an incentivized player back at work. And these distractions, the media vultures like Dan Dugan swarming will sort of settle down and hopefully go away for now. It is a huge win for Shane and Dable. And they can still franchise tag him next year, which is a big note and something to consider here. They locked up Jones earlier. Joe Shane, you dog you. I mean, you are putting together a masterclass in less than two years on the job bringing in these guys. I don't know who your receivers are. So we'll have to uh, talk about that in a bit. And for more on Saquon and the Giants, who are contenders in the NFC, let's bring in Dan Dugan. I don't know if that's a question mark or an exclamation point with this contender talk, but you work for the Athletic and you cover these Giants. Uh, Dan, this is a big day. Yeah, and no offense taken to the Vultures comment, of course. Um, <laughs> but no, it, it, I mean, you're saying you're on the West Coast. At least I was awake when it happened. I can't imagine, you know, yeah. how many tweets must have been on your timeline by the time you, uh, you saw this news because, I didn't see it coming. It felt like once that deadline passed last week, we were going to be in for a long stare down. And, you know, there was already talks, but he sit out games. So sit out games, he won't even sit out of practice. I mean, he reported today, he'll be on the field tomorrow. So, um, again, it's been, a, it's been a long process. It started last November. And, you know, obviously the Giants had the leverage, they used the leverage. And even right down to the finish line here, Saquon Barkley, I just think he just didn't have the stomach to actually follow through with any of the threats he could have made about sitting out. He wanted to be there with his team. You got a little bit of a sweetener here. Not much. The Giants still didn't give much, uh, but they get a happy, yeah. motivated Saquon Barkley, and, and everyone's happy in the locker room. And, and, you know, it couldn't have worked out better for them based on <laughs> how far they've gone down this path. I wonder if he's happy. I don't know if he's happy, but it's a, a thing where he sort of, and his, and his representation, of course, they know that the leverage is on the other side. The, because of the market is what it is. It's no one's fault. It's not Saquon's fault, running back's fault, or the GM's trying to do their job and be responsible as it doesn't seem trendy uh, to give out these lucrative deals to these running backs at this point in time. They can still tag him next year. It's all roses for the Giants brass. They're certainly happy. Is there anything about this deal or these incentives that I need to know? 
Yeah, yeah. I will say, yeah, happy is probably not the right word, but he's content enough <laughs> to show up. But no, that's what I mean. Like, they didn't give up much. I thought the, the thing that might have got this over the edge would be like, we'll put a provision in that they can't tag you next year. That way, he's motivated because he knows he has a great year. He's going to hit the market and finally get what he thinks he deserves. Yeah. The fact that they didn't have to do that, and even if you look at the actual incentives, he didn't achieve these last year, and he had a great year last year. 1,350 rushing yards, 11 touchdowns, um, mm. 60 catches, I think, and they have to make the playoffs. So he can have a great year if the team doesn't make the playoffs. So for the Giants, it's it's all about you know gravy at that point for them. If he hits all these incentives and they make the playoffs, they'll happily fork over $900,000 more dollars in exchange for having him report to camp and not have drama and not have this hanging over everything. So to me, it's such a win for them. I guess you can say, okay, he got 900 more grand, but if he, if he plays well enough to achieve those, we're in the same spot next year. Cause then they can tag him again. So uh, the giants certainly yeah. um, won these negotiations right down to, to the last thing here today. Yeah. It's, it's exciting to have a back, you know, to talk about it. And now you can answer questions like the receiver question that I'm about to give you <laughs> because it's been such a big storyline. I like offense. I like fantasy football. You know, they got Daniel Jones done right at the wire and they got to get him some receivers to do their thing. Um, you know, and I was thinking about before the show, and I think I was reading something that you had written about how when Gettleman was running the show, like, he was bringing in those big ticket guys. He was like, yeah, we need a wide receiver one. We're paying the big bucks to a Kenny Galladay. That doesn't seem to be Shane's deal, especially when it comes to these receivers. And there's so many new faces. you got your Jalen Hyatt. I'm sure he's a standout you're looking forward to checking out in camp. Paris Campbell. they got a veteran, Cole Beasley. Wondell Robinson coming back after he missed most of his rookie year. They say bye to Kadarius Tony. So that's kind of who they have. Who do you think emerges from this group? Is there a go-to guy in the mix for Daniel Jones this season? Well, I, see, I think the important way to look at this is not wide receiver, it's pass catcher, because it's Darren Waller. And that's the yeah. thing where yeah. Dave Gettleman might have thrown a lot of money at some wide receiver on the market because we need a wide receiver. And credit to Joe Shane, he got creative and said, there isn't really a number one wide receiver available. There isn't someone we could trade for or sign that's going to really move the needle. So let me get creative. Create a third round pick is actually what they got back in the Kadarius Tony trade, ironically enough, and get down wall. And now listen, there's some risk there. He's on the wrong side of 30, been injured the last few years. But if you get the prime version of down wall from just a few years ago, that's a guy who can be a game changing receiver. As far as the actual wide receivers, yeah, I mean, it's still kind of a hodgepodge group. I mean, Jalen Hyatt's a third round rookie. I think you expect it to be a little bit of a transition for him. I think the sort of X factor guy who looked really good in the spring, and, and you never know how much that'll carry over, is Paris Campbell. Because he's a guy who came into the league with some hype, definitely had major injury problems in Indianapolis, started to you know put it together last year. And if, if the arrow keeps pointing up for him, he's the guy I think could maybe exceed the expectations. Otherwise, it's a lot of you know twos and threes. They still don't have a number one wide receiver. They need Dan Wall to be that number one pass catcher. This team didn't come out of nowhere, but in such a short time when everybody was talking rebuild, let's see what we can do, let's figure things out, is Daniel Jones the guy? What they were able to do last year was incredible and impressed the pants off of everybody in sports media and fans alike. So we hope they can build on it with some stability now. Some of these questions are sort of getting figured out before training camp even super gets kicked off. So good luck to the Giants. I'm sure it'll be a wild ride. And I'm rooting for you. Enough of this Jets BS. Enough of this talk about what's going on in Florham. Like, like not, and Archie, doesn't that annoy you that they're getting all the love, Dan? Come on. Well, it's fine. They don't usually get too much of the attention, so it'll be a little different this year. Maybe training camp will <laughs> be a little less populated. Send everyone out there to document Aaron Rodgers, and maybe I can have a little more time with these guys without a million cameras and, and recorders in their faces. I love that little pew pew jets across the way. We like a little rivalry and I will probably see you at Giants camp one of these days. I'm trying to weasel my way out there uh, and check out these guys myself. We appreciate you, Dan Dugan, with The Athletic and we will talk to you uh, down the stretch. I, I need to start packing my SPF now to be out. I just pictured me in Florham Park or with the Giants and that just sounds like a tough day. Uh, okay, so Saquon, he's on his way to that tough day, hopefully happy and settled, at least less distractive and certainly incentive Devised. And uh, then Josh Jacobs might be going in the other direction, literally. Tom Pellicer reporting just yesterday Jacobs was spotted on a flight out of Vegas. No, leaving Las Vegas. And uh, he's been telling some people close to him that he doesn't plan on returning anytime soon. Now, I would usually say that's a smart decision when leaving Vegas and having to do that awful walk through McCarran Airport where you're like dreading your loss of integrity somewhere by the, you know, by the pool somewhere at some beach club. Uh, this is not what I want. I want him to be there. And Josh, we should note, is not going to be fined because he hasn't signed his franchise tag yet, so he isn't technically under contract. So let's be real. There's not really much of an incentive for him to show up 
on time and maybe he can work some, you know, squeeze something out of it, Saquon-esque one-year magic with some incentives. But he also cannot negotiate or renegotiate anything long-term until after the season e- either. So I can't see him passing up on $10 million, um, that in a worst case scenario, he will hopefully show up. I don't know that anybody has the, you know, like what Dan was saying, like, does he have the stomach for it? You're losing money. You want to be out there. What are you doing for your future? Whose playbook are you following that says that holding out is a good idea? What's the injury risk when you show up with that? All of that needs to be considered. Um, So I'd be shocked if this actually bleeds into this season. I think we see Jacobs show up when he has to, and we see him sort of uh, continue to run through defenses like this and try to set himself up for a better 2024. And I have to say this, assuming the Raiders have Jacobs, Devontae Adams, and a healthy Jimmy G in the fold, I think they're getting a little disrespected right now. That's right, Raiders fans. You might be a little bit, what's going on? We don't want Jimmy G. Josh Jacobs isn't showing up. But if I'm a Raiders fan, get pissed off. Look at at these odds at FanDuel Sportsbook. The Raiders are the third biggest long shot to make the playoffs in the entire league. What? I'm taking this. Are you kidding me? Sure. There's questions about Jimmy's ability to stay healthy all year long, his deep ball, blah, 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 blah. Let's not forget about the 44-19 record he put together as a starter, people. I'm not saying he's going to outdo Patrick Mahomes, you know, single-handedly, but he could be a stabilizing force as offense needs after that disappointing 2022. So really, I think the biggest question people are doubting this team on is Josh McDaniels. Not Josh Jacobs, not Jimmy G, the J that wears the visor hat that it didn't work out with in a lot of other teams and he did his thing in New England. Does he have it? The track record goes back to Denver, so it's fair to question. But now Josh has his quarterback, the guy he wanted and brought into the fold. I don't know if it's because I was in Italy. Do I always talk with my hands like this? I'm so sorry. Um, ow. Um, this roster is loaded with talent, guys, so I'm not ready to give up on the Raiders. And if I'm the Raiders, get mad at the disrespect the odds makers and pundits uh, are whopping on you. Is Champagne going to be that good? Is it really? Let, let's, uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it with somebody who loves the Raiders even more than I do from LV Sports Network, the host of Raider Nation Radio. Oh, please welcome back my boy, your boy, Q. Hey, what's happening? How you doing, Kay? Appreciate you having me on the show. It's great to see you. I haven't seen you since Super Bowl. What do you think of those odds? Well, you know, it seems like every single year the Raiders have uh, bad odds. And every single year, except for last year, uh, they actually, you know, beat their odds, you know, as far as total wins. Uh, you know, the plus th- 390, of course, it's it's a it's a very long shot for them to make the playoffs according to those odds. But if everything comes together, and I think that that's why those odds are the way they are, because there's so many questions. You know, you rolled them out pretty pretty great there, you know, as far as the, the injury history of Jimmy G. You know, can Josh McDaniels yeah. be a really good head coach as opposed to a really good offensive coordinator? There's questions, of course, the defense, is it going to come together? But if everything comes together, the team could be really good, and especially that offense. I think the offense could be very dynamic and strong with Jimmy G knowing Josh McDaniels and having his guys in place. But again, it's always going to be about Jimmy G and making sure he's under center, which he is right now, and uh, you know, training camp gets started tomorrow, so that's a good thing. It's right, and Josh Jacobs will not be there. That's a bad thing, something that we want to rectify, but he's doing his thing. We respect it. What are the chances he takes this holdout into into the season. I don't think he's going to do that. And this is just my gut feeling. I think that $10 million is too much to, to pass on. We've seen how it's worked out for other running backs who haven't shown up like a Le'Veon Bell type situation. And it just doesn't make any sense for Josh. And you saw what happened with Saquon Barkley this morning. I believe happened with uh, Josh Jacobs. And again, this is just my gut feeling, but I think that's what the Raiders will do. They know how valuable he is. I mean, that guy had 393 touches last season. He was the engine that made the Raiders go. So he's so valuable to the team. He's not just a running back. He's the running back. He's Josh Jacobs. He led the league in rushing. Uh, he's he's just that guy. He's an alpha dog. And as Max Crosby has said, they need more dogs on the team. Devontae Adams has been on a tour talking about they they need to go in a foxhole with him. That's the guy that he wants to ride with. So I think they'll get done mm-hmm. sooner rather than later. But it's just the situation with the running backs. You know how it is these days. But what Saquon Barkley did this morning, I think is what similar is going to happen with Josh Jacobs. I hope so. I hope he gets something back that maybe incentivizes him and gets him where he needs to be for this year. They certainly don't have the... Um, they don't have the leverage on their side of the running backs at this point in time, at least. Um, I showed you the odds. I want to talk about Josh McDaniels because I have a feeling that's why they're so 
stacked against the Las Vegas Raiders and their success for this season. What went wrong, the most wrong, last year? I don't have time for everything that went wrong, but I. But what went the most <laughs> right. wrong, and why should I expect things to be better now, outside, or maybe it is just that he has his guy now? Well, what went most wrong was they lost close games, and in 2021, when they made mm. the playoffs, they went on that four-game winning streak, Streak, they won all those one score games all those down to the wire games and a lot of people said that's not sustainable well in 2022 they blew some double digit leads you know and that's something that can't happen as well and so a lot of that they want to point and say that that was on the quarterback I think that was the collective I think that was on Josh McDaniels I think that was on the defense I think that was on the quarterback that, that was a team effort uh, when they lost double digit leads and then they lost the close game so that's one of the biggest keys is they've got to be able to find a way to win those close games. They've got to be able to sustain double digit leads. And, you know, they make the move for Marcus Peters. Maybe he's a guy that can help that defense close out games. You know, one of the biggest game back to is that Thursday night against the Rams, you know, Baker Mayfield had been on the Rams about 12 minutes and he goes out there and he goes on a drive to end the game to win the game. Those can't happen. Right. So those mm. are the kind of games that the Raiders lost that are heartbreaking for the fan base. Cause they're looking at like, what in the world is going on? How did that happen? They lost the 20 point lead at halftime against the uh, Cardinals in week two at home. Right. They were and they lose that game like that can't happen. They let Kyler Murray run around the field. So, you know, the, the, the double digit leads they lost, the close games, they, they found ways to lose. Josh McDaniel and the defensive coordinator, they have to find ways to come together and make sure they can pull those off. If they can, they'll win more games than they did in 2022, where they went six and 11. I hope Jimmy G has a lot to do with that because you can say what you want about him, but he is a winner. I don't know about the closing out games, but he sure does win a lot of them when he's out there and he's healthy. And players have always talked about their confidence in him because of that. He's a player's quarterback. Guys like to be around him. So um, hopefully that all shakes out really well. We can hear you on Raider Nation Radio and with the LV Sports Network. You're, honestly, I always learn. I don't even know. I, I forgot about that, that week two Cardinal game. In Vegas is in the back of my mind a nightmare situation for Raiders fans watching, but hopefully there's some positivity uh, to look ahead to this season. We appreciate you, Q. Absolutely appreciate you having me on. All right, talk to you soon. Now, we are heading um, into the season, which means um, if you're deranged and unhinged like me, you still want a fantasy guy to talk about, right? I'm going to tell you why you should wait for a quarterback and draft. Oh, maybe this guy? Or the guy in Seattle, either one, take a pick. Turn dingers into dollars all baseball season with Dinger Tuesdays on FanDuel. Dinger Tuesdays. It's America's number one sports book. Just bet $25 or more on any player to hit a home run and get $5 in bonus bets for every homer hit by either team. Listen, this L.A. De La Cruz, what a safe uh, situation that is. He is crushing it, a special player. He's got the Brewers tonight. He hit two. He's hit home runs in two straight so far. Let's make it three. Ellie, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and get in on all the MLB action today. All right, we are back. We've got two Super Bowl champions coming up. We've got Malik Jackson. We've got TJ Ward Turn, CEO of a sports agency. We'll be talking to him in a bit. It's all very exciting. But we are back um, from our, our long hiatus, very much looking forward to the 2023 season. And we, you know, I don't know how to put this I'm a bit of a procrastinator I'm sort of like a last minute Larry like let's put it together let's you know throw a big party tomorrow let's do this so I've been kind of circling this idea of going to visit some training camps and uh, lo and behold we kind of think we pulled one together and we're going I mean it we're going to training camps it's a bit of a tour I, I would say the asterisks everywhere <laughs> but we're gonna try to roll it out uh, like can we take a look at it we don't have anything. Oh, I thought we had something that didn't have the dates or the city. I thought we had something, no? We're holding off on that entirely. Okay, well, here's what I want you to know. Up and Adams is going to a training camp, hopefully near you. If I could go to all of them, I would go to all of them. But we're not doing that. We're probably going to hit, I don't know. I think we might, go, we might go anywhere between seven and ten days. And I'm not going alone. Uh, Marissa McBride, our intrepid super producer, and Matthew Hamilton, who was here, are also being bullied into going <laughs> with me. Hi, Hamilton. Hello. <laughs> I'm glad it's down to seven to 10 days from seven to 27 days, which it was last week. So 
That's good. It's progress. Just, how could you pick, if you have 32 children, how can you pick which ones are most important? And by the way, that brings me to a great point. It's not the teams we want to go to. I mean, they all are. But we're not ruling teams out because yeah. we don't want to go see them. I want to go to all of them badly. I want to use, like, the Bill and Ted yeah. phone booth to take me from one to the other. Uh, and, like, I would... We're driving to most places. We're doing everything, but there is so much strategy. There are so many logistics that I don't deal with at all because Richard Isica deals with all of them. But it sounds really hard. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't actually request the Bill and Ted phone booth uh, to Richard Isica while <laughs> while you're making your uh, your list of demands, uh, which I think I believe included an ice cream truck and water balloons and. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm having a conversation with some of our production staff. Like, remember, guys, like, we want to have as much fun as possible, but it's also training camp. Like, you know, guys are competing for jobs. There's serious stuff going on. And, like, while we're having that conversation, the text comes in, like, let's get a lot of water balloons and throw them at people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just want to go where there's fans because that's fun because those fans are the re those are the realist fans. Oh, those yeah. are the ones that pop in and they make their travel and they're sweating and like, I want, I want, you know, I just want to bring candy. I want to have one of those, you know, when you go to like a, a little league game and there's that table with like airheads and grape Jolly Ranchers and stuff for like five cents. I just want to do that and just have a table of free stuff for everybody to come by and get stuff. I also thought a partnership with like, well, first of all, a private jet airline wouldn't have been dumb. I mean, it's just, that's just smart. Wheels up, sup, you up, <laughs> sending the text. Uh, but instead we're doing like a conversion van from like the, like the Dumb and Dumber van is what we're gonna end up in. That's fine. Um, I'm yeah. excited for my various continental breakfasts. I'm excited for the air conditioned thing to be right outside the window, uh, cooling my various <laughs> hotel rooms across this great nation. Uh, but I thought like if we did like a dip and Dots truck, you know, like a dip and Dots <laughs> thing, players would be so happy. I'm for the players. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, you, uh, yeah, you're always looking out for the players. I mean, the nu the nutritionists aren't going to be happy about the dip and dots truck, but, uh, but oh, yeah, God. uh, I just, but, but the I idea, like it wasn't I, just to I get a dip like and dots truck. You wanted, you wanted to drive the dip and dots truck. It wasn't just getting it. It was you driving it and passing out ice cream all over camp, I think was your idea. I just want love. I want to spread love. I want to <laughs> add love into the mix. I'm worried about the fans. Yeah. And uh, I asked, you know, because I can't decide and Richard's going to kill me because I keep changing it up and saying, Chicago, Green Bay, Minnesota, no, 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 let's go to Oxnard. I said, which training camp should I visit? And Marissa pulled some tweets. Hamilton, what do we got? Are they still called right, tweets or are they here. just the X? Oh, yeah. X. X, the X. Cam <laughs> says, go oh, Cam Jordan, our guy. Come on, how is this a question? When don't we have fun? Well, we don't know. I don't know that we've ever had sober fun together, Cam Jordan. So I don't know. Can we bring tequila into camp? I don't know if DA would really like that. Uh, Dan Horde, oh, voice of the Bengals. I will personally autograph the massive forehead of the, oh, okay. I get to do some bobblehead signing. You know how much I like signing autographs, Hamilton. That's not the way to get me to Cincinnati. <laughs> Uh, what's this one? Oh, Victor the Viking. Uh, apparently he's a, he's a really big fan of yours. Um, if you go check out his profile, the Vikings mascot, um, loves, okay. loves him some K Adams. So, um, this, yeah, it's kind of, kind of disturbing. Maybe go. don't, don't go there, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. This yeah, would be the time to, to go there, there otherwise. No, no, no. Um, okay. Okay. I like this. Chris Bryant. Hog Farmer Chris, I think you have to feel the new vibes, right? Washington, I'm very interested in doing a little vibe check, a little swing through yeah. uh, El Capitel. Let's do that. Let's do, okay, we got a fan here. No other better answer than to come to Allen Park. Come see what Brad Holmes is cooking I in the D. A return for you. Allen, Allen Park is lovely this time of year. I'd, I'd love to go back. CJ Gardner, we could sit on the sidelines and watch with him. LaDainian Tomlinson, yeah. oh, bolt up. LT. Let's go. I bet LT's there. <laughs> now that's one that we should go to because they're right, there's somewhere called Costa Mesa. If you gave me $1 million to tell me if Costa Mesa was north or <laughs> south of me in LA right now, I, I had a 50-50 chance. Right. I have no idea. Re remember uh, when you lived in so, Brooklyn for five years and didn't know it was a part, it was technically like located on Long Island? I just want you to know I'm so glad that I gave you six weeks off so that you could get refreshed, 
relax, feel some gratitude in your life, and that you paint me in such a beautiful picture every time you come upon the air on Up and Adams, not rebranded to X, G, B, or for. any other letter in the alphabet. Uh, guys, hit us up. Where should we go? We're putting it together. I'm thinking we go for seven days, and I think we can hit eight camps in seven days. I think we can make it happen. It's it's aggressive, but I think we can uh, I think we can pull it off. I hear Richard Isco and Mayer going no, but no. Let's let's Richard go for has it. a bee in his bonnet today. He's got a bee in his bonnet. I'm teeing <laughs> Hamilton up on tweets saying, "What does that one say?" And he's in my ear. You know what that one says? We went over it in the meeting. <laughs> I'm just letting Hamilton take it away, bro. Let's just relax. All right, listen. These camps have ever changing <laughs> schedules. It's going to rain. We're gonna get. We already tried making something happen and it didn't work. I want to go to Miami. It's some liability issue with family. I don't know. So hit us up at Up and Adam Show on socials and let us know where we need to go for training camp. Oh, we're going. All right. Now, see a Hamilton. Yeah. Scram. You get out of here. I got business to get to. We've got <laughs> TJ Ward and Malik Jackson to get to. But first, I'm going to hit you a little fantasy bit. Yeah. If you like me, love fantasy football, I just figured I could, and I don't know what order this is going to come out in. I don't know if I'm going to talk about guys I like. I don't like day-to-day sleepers, breakup players, rookies, second-year leap guys, whatever. Just things that I'm thinking through my day. Because that's how it happens. I'll be driving in the car, trying to parallel park, failing miserably, and I'll say, oh, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is that dude. And today I want to focus on the Jags quarterback. Trevor Lawrence finished his breakout season ranked eighth among quarterbacks. But I do think he's scratching the surface. There's a lot of reasons to think that. He got better and better as the season went on. Second half of last season, he ranked second in touchdown and interception ratio, sixth in fantasy points per game, ahead of guys like Justin Herbert, ahead of Dak Prescott. So let's not sleep on the wheels as well. Check this out. He punched in five touchdowns on the ground last year. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that number go up as well. Five touchdowns is icing on the fantasy cake, people. And if all that wasn't enough, you got your second year in the Doug Peterson system. There's chemistry there. There's some stability there. And remember, Calvin Ridley is entering the chat for this offense, too. So adding in a true number one wide receiver should only take Trevor's game to another level. So everybody's jumping to get your Jalen Hurts. I love it. Do it if you want to. Patrick Mahomes. I'm like an old lady granny. Everybody else take the quarterbacks. Be stupid. And I wait for the value and where it is not in the second and third rounds you can get trevor for a steal in the sixth round because that's where his adp is right now but hopefully it bumps up after this all right we've got tj ward uh super bowl champion and now ceo of a sports agency very excited to talk to him and get his thoughts not only in the broncos but the running back situation what's going on with players in the league as it evolves also malik jackson newly retired Ooh, Super Bowl champions and a great guest. I'm very excited to have him. I know he's going to bring it on a Tuesday morning. He played safety for eight seasons with the Browns, the Broncos, and the Bucks, a two-time Pro Bowler, leader of the no-fly zone defense of the Super Bowl champion Denver Broncos and He's a CEO. What? He launched his own sports agency called Player Above Sports Group. TJ Ward, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. How's your summer? It's going great. You know, the sun is finally coming out here in L.A. Uh, <laughs> the overcast is gone, so it's a lot better than the previous three weeks, but it's doing well. Yeah. Yeah. There's 49 states in, in, in the country that are just mad at us for complaining about the, the weather in L.A., but I'm right there with you. I'm finally ready for this L.A. weather that brought me to the West Coast. You, I don't know how much time you're getting in the sun lately, TJ, because you're like a C- CEO vibe right now. What made you want to start your own agency? I mean, it was a mix of things, just my experience with, you know, a couple of agents that I had while I was playing, um, a notice of some needs from younger guys going into, you know, their careers. And I just wanted to help, you know, during and post career with some of the nuances that, you know, players aren't aware of or just aren't thinking of at the time. So I just really wanted to give back and help to the next generation of players coming along. Now you sort of, you, you, I I read a couple interviews about this. 
but I don't know what happened. Can you tell me a little bit about what happened? I know that you, you know, there were some up and downs with some of your dealings. I saw a tweet from you in 2014, and I believe that was coming off a Pro Bowl season where you crushed and lit up the NFL, that the Cleveland Browns didn't even offer you a contract, and then you ended up signing with the Broncos. What went on in that negotiation? I really, I'm not too aware of any negotiations happening. It was kind of just the end of the road in Cleveland for me, and I think they just wanted to go in another direction. But um, my time in Cleveland was great. There was no, you know, um, friction between me and the front office at that time. So it was just a thing where it was time for us to part ways. So but, tell me know, about course, signing your player. Being... Go ahead. Go oh, yeah, ahead. I mean, just, of course, like, not having a team that draft you, offer you a new contract, and as well as I played there, it was kind of disappointing, but um, it was time to move on, and, and ending up in Denver was the best thing that happened for my career, for sure. So what does being a former player, a Super Bowl champion, a bona fide guy who played at the level that you played at, and then the elite level you played at within that group, like, what can you offer these young cats that are undertaking training camp, these veteran receivers or veteran players that still want to get as much as they can on their last deal. Like with your agency and these guys and w women that you're going to employ to make these negotiations, like what benefit does being a player and having lived that offer them? Oh, um, it just offer them uh, in, in your shoes experience. I've been almost to the top of the, anything you could do in the NFL and I've experienced, you know, the lows of, you know, trying to get on the team. So I have, you know, uh, excessive amount of, amount of knowledge to, to give them through different, you know, experiences and viewpoints from being a second round pick, pro bowler, all pro, you know, Super Bowl champ to being a free agent, you know, looking for a home. So, you know, whether it's on the field, off the field, um, business endeavors, nonprofit, um, management, financials, you know, we provide that type of advice and management for the players. And through my experiences, through the experiences of my team, you know, we have a real rounded group of guys and women that, you know, can mold these guys and help direct them to where they want to go. It's the Player Above Sports Group. Uh, it's the agency that you have put together, and you you have a couple guys in camp. I can't imagine it's easy to start an agency. It's all really exciting and very cool that you're doing this. But you know, one of the storylines this year, just to get your thoughts on it as a player and somebody who's around these agents now, um, is this whole running back situation. Uh, you know, Saquon, I don't know if you saw yet because we're in L.A., we just woke up, but Saquon made a deal, right? He was going to hold out. He didn't want to play on his tag. It's a one-year deal. It's not much more than he was going to play for on the tag. He squeezed out a couple of incentives, a one-year situation to get him back in camp. But Josh Jacobs might not show up, right? He might hold out with the Las Vegas Raiders. What do you think should happen with the running back position or what would you advise Josh Jacobs to do? You know, that's a it's a hard take because you see some of the yeah. running backs have got paid. And I think Chubb said something that was, you know, very true. It's like the more production they have, it's almost works against them because of the wear and tear that, you know, some front offices may see them, you know, um, not able to hold up in the future. So I think for that position group, it's great that they're coming together and sticking together. And I think that more players and the NFL as a whole needs to do, especially when it comes to the new um, collective bargaining agreement. Um, I think players definitely need to band together to get things done because that's the only way. Uh, but I wouldn't say that they haven't been getting paid. I I've seen, you know, whether it's um, – Henry. Uh, the guy in Tennessee, I'm blanking McCaffrey. right now. Derek Henry. Henry McCaffrey. And, um, yeah. You know, McCaffrey, Mixon. You know, guys are getting getting some money. So I think at the end of the day, you have to stick together as a position group. But at the same time, you kind of got to do what's best for you and your family. And my advice is just to get your money as soon as possible. You know, try to get it before you even think. near that second contract because um, – with that position, like I said, one to two years, you might be done, or they might think you're done. It's almost like turning 30 in the NFL, but in, for running backs, it's like turning 26. <laughs> so it's they true. have a shorter window, I guess. 
They need they need to have shorter deals off their rookie year. It shouldn't be four yeah, years for plus sure. one. It should be three years because then you're tied. I mean, Saquon's tied up. He's never, you know, he might never have the chance. They can tag him next year. He might never get the chance to hit the market and play for anybody else because if he does another two years, who's going to want him and who's going to want him at the premium price? So uh, yeah. I definitely think you're making a lot of sense there. I want to turn a little bit from agency and the NFL to stuff that you do off the field because I know that that's part of your passion is to not, not only help with these negotiations and like the boring stuff of the decimal points and the bags being thrown around the league, but what these men are going to be like off of the field. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you've always been like that. It's not just what you want to do with your agency, but you've done a ton of work with the Ward Boy Project. So tell us a little bit about the foundation and what you have going on with it this summer. Yeah, Ward Boy Project is our, uh, me and my brother, Terrell Ward, he um, played running back for the Falcons for three years. It's our nonprofit, and basically we provide mentorship, um, programs, um, athletic access, whether it's youth programs um, or camps, like you see on, on the screen, was our World War camp. Our second annual uh, post-COVID football camp in the Bay Area, we held it at De La Salle High School, which is our alma mater in Concord, California. But it's all it's all about mm-hmm. providing access and opportunity for these kids um, that wouldn't see it otherwise or have limited access to so whether it's academic, um, health and nutrition, um, or athletic, you know, we're trying to be here for the youth. I love that. And you guys can get more information at Ward Boy Project about that and everything you do. You have always, you've not just talked about it, you've always done actions and been about it um, through the years that everybody just loved you, everybody outside of Cam Newton, of course, in the, <laughs> in the NFL. I want to talk about your Broncos, different times, lots of changes. I read an interview that you did a couple of months ago and you talked about Patrick Sertan and how the defense, like it's not just one guy, it's everybody on the defense. And then you were asked about the offense and I don't know if it was just, you, you, you know, you were like, Russell Wilson should be a little bit better. That's what you said. But everybody's thinking he's going to be so much better because now he has Sean and now he's got like Jerry Judy more and like he's got, do you, what, what do I need to know? Like what, what's going to happen with Russell Wilson this year? I think that, I mean, I love the Bronco fan base. I mean, they're (laughs) the greatest fans. But sometimes you just got to turn the optimism down. I think that's what happened last year with so much expectation, hype, and optimism about Mm. Russell coming in. And you just got to just watch the game and and watch OTAs and camping. You know, have your expectations off off of that, not just, you know, a name coming in. But there's so many changes on the offense and, it's a carousel, so I'm, it's hard for me to keep up, honestly. <laughs> it's hard for me to keep up, but I think Judy's going to have an excellent year if if Russell, you know, um, focuses on if trying to get won. that guy the ball, right? <laughs> get him the ball okay. in short areas and let him, you know, do what he does after the catch. He'll have a better season, that's for sure. <laughs> but um, uh, the running back's back. He's healthy. I think they could use another running back in free agency. I know there's a few out there right now. Um, I yeah. think every team needs a two-back system for sure. Um, and I think just that alone will, will help them improve. The defense is going to be solid. They're going to be solid for sure. They did pretty well I last think you don't guys. believe in. I think you don't believe in Russell Wilson. That's what I think you're saying. <laughs> you know what? I, it's not that I don't believe in Russell. I believe in Russell, and I believe in his skill set. Okay. But – you have to play him at his skill set. You can't, you know, play him like you would play Peyton Manning. You know, you can't play him like uh, you play Drew Brees. You know, it's a different skill set. So you have to, every player in the NFL, you have to put them in positions that, you know, uses their skill set to the best, you know, ability. And I, did, I think that makes a great coach. When you find your players and you know how to use them to the best of their ability and make them the most successful then the whole team would be successful overall. But you can't you, – you have to be able to run the ball. Well, that's what I'm going to say. If you can't okay. run the ball – So they need Russell, to add – He's not going to be – he's not going to be um, the Russell that everyone thinks he is. You know, you have to be able to run the ball, and he works best off of the play action, get him outside and let him see the field yeah. and work from there. I don't think Marshawn Lynch is, is coming a uh, coming a mile high anytime soon. So they got to hit free agency. There's some definitely Kareem Hunt is still looking for a home. There's lots of running backs mm-hmm. still out there potentially. But those injuries are creeping up. Naeem Hines went down for the Bills, so they should be making moves. Sean Payton, get on that 
Get on that. Okay, listen, you mentioned Peyton Manning. You were a, not only a member, but you were a defensive leader on that 2015 Broncos Super Bowl champion team. You had said Peyton Manning on offense. Your defense meant, you know, the defense is really important in uh, making things happen for that team that year. Von Miller was the Super Bowl 50 MVP. You were joined by Aqib Tlaib, Chris Harris in the secondary. I need you to settle a bit of a, a debate that goes on on Twitter sometimes or on stupid talk shows like this one. Uh, who is more important to the defensive success of that team, the pass rush or the secondary? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, honestly, I'll probably say the pass rush. <laughs> I'm not uh, like okay. You, know, you can see our secondary was tight, but you know we did what we did. We worked off each other, but you know we wouldn't have been any successful without that pass rush. That's for sure. Now, do you, now do you know Malik hey, Jackson? Hey, Malik, hey. what's going on? I'm glad yeah. you're telling the truth out there, TJ. I'm glad you're telling the truth out there, man. You know, I, I, you know I, 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 I give wasn't... you all the credit, man. Y'all, y'all made our lives easy. I'm not going. I'm not going for it. Hey man, it was it was a very uh, cohesive relationship, fam. Y'all was back there locking stuff up and uh, you know get, getting receivers scared from being hit, so that quarterback had to hold the rock. So, you know, sure. it's very uh, teamwork. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, TJ, we appreciate you. We thank you for coming on. Congrats on all of the success. And again, the agency, it's incredible. It is called Player Above Sports Group. And and just remember, tell your guys not to hold out. I just want them at the camps. I want them not to lose money. And I'm sure that you guys will take care of that. What they're, These players are like transitioning into the NFL, out of the NFL, on the field. And you're really doing something that I haven't seen done before. So congratulations, TJ. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Lee. Appreciate oh, no, it. Down, TJ. Try, I know. All right, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Malik, we're going to take a short break and be back with Malik Jackson. I was worried there for a second, but that's, you know, I wasn't trying to start anything, but there we go. We got Malik Jackson on the show after this to talk about, I mean, are you about to go golfing? Are we shopping? <laughs> What's retired life like? We'll talk about it after this. <laughs> All right, my next guest who you've already met in the previous segment is a pro bowler and Super Bowl winning defensive tackle who played for uh, the Broncos, the Jags, Eagles, Browns, I believe a decade in the NFL. Last week he announced his retirement from the NFL. Say it ain't so, Malik Jackson coming to us from a park, it looks like. Yes, I'm uh, out here getting some sunshine, some nice uh, vitamin D, <laughs> so just hanging out. Yes. Okay, I hope that ambulance isn't isn't coming your way, your yeah, way, Malik. No. We love having you. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate that. My bad for the back noise. I'm actually had to bring my grandma to the uh, for a checkup, so we're at the hospital right now. But uh, uh, yeah, the, okay. the retired. The we retired won't take life. too much. We won't take too much of your time. Yeah, you got to get your steps and you got to make sure you're. It's okay. You can say you're going to the doctor. You want to make sure you're to get to get <laughs> enough calcium, fiber, all that stuff. Uh, I'm excited for you. I think this will be, you know, the, the world is your oyster. You can do media. You can, you know, spend some time finding other interests, all of that. Um, you just saw TJ Ward on here. When you see people from that Super Bowl winning team, like old teammates, is there just like a spark? Is there something that happens? Is it special? It's very special. I think, like you said, I've been on four teams. So to be able to uh, see a guy like TJ, I think that Super Bowl just makes it that much that much better of a relationship. You know, I mean, you go through teams, you know, years are up and down, you know, but if you don't really win anything, it's like, all right, cool, we did our thing, now let's move on. But with a guy like TJ uh, to win the Super Bowl, it's just it's just special. Um, it's it's kind of hard to explain, but it's just special. Are you on the phone right now, Malik? Yeah, I'm on this uh, beautiful, uh, I'm not getting paid to uh, shout things out. So yeah, I'm on, I'm on the what phone. What is right this? Now. What I mean, phone I, is yeah, this? When, when, when grandma calls, am I am I lagging right now? Is my service bad? It's not AT&T. No, I it's promise. like I literally feel like you're on a camera. Like you're on like NFL Network went out there and put a camera in the parking lot of the hospital. Like you are <laughs> coming through beautifully pristine. Okay, we're really excited about this. Um, you know, we, we were talking about the Broncos with TJ Ward. I want to ask you about a team I'm really excited about and high on this year, and that's Jacksonville. You played there, that whole, like, you and Ngakwe, those, like, 2017 vibes um, of okay. Saxonville. It was so fun to watch. Um, you know, they didn't start out too hot last year, but they want to capitalize on some of the late season momentum, um, specifically on defense. How do they do that? And what do you need to see out of a guy like Trayvon Walker? Um, well, how do they do that? I, I think they need to come together. I think it's important to get your leaders um, figured out and have them be consistent on and off the field um, to let everybody know what they expect from when they step in this team. Um, 
I think they can do it. You said uh, the player, Mr. Walker. I think he just needs to go out there and keep being himself, leading that defense, whether it be out there pressuring the quarterback um, or just coming or, uh, excuse me, coming off the edge, pressuring the quarterback, getting sacks, or just getting the other guys and the younger guys in line. So when he's taking a break, the, uh, everything keeps going. So it's one of those things I just think everybody just needs to be on the same page. They need to understand what they're good at. And, uh, and 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 what they can bring to the table and what they're not good at, so other people get to shine in situations that uh, they need to be in. So that's it. Yeah, you got him, and then you have Josh Allen, right? Josh Allen's another stud. He's young. He's yeah. leading that Jags defense, though. A lot of people say that he's the most underrated edge defender in the entire league. Okay, he's in the last year of his rookie deal. What does he need to do? What do you see in his game that can take to the next level? I see a really. Dominant edge rusher. You know, I think this guy came in off his rookie deal. I was very surprised how he came in and just really just took off. You know, I believe he was there with uh, Yannick and Gakwe at the time, and I think Yannick really helped him get off the ground and helped him teach him some things. But I think this guy's really came into his own and is somebody that can really be, that should really be feared. Um, you know, it's a big year for him. You know, I, I know I know with those second contracts, you know, those are nerve, nerve-wracking years. But if you do what you're supposed to do, get those sacks, create those pressures, and be a good leader, um, it's only the ceiling for you. Really, the ceiling is nothing. It's really the sky. So um, if we can just go out there and, and do exactly what he needs to do, get those, hopefully break the sack record, that, that should be a goal of his. And uh, he's going to get a bag. I love it. We hope he does, of course, coming out of his rookie deal. Um, okay, there's some. There's a list put together by some sports betting commission. I think it was in Canada. But they ranked the most loyal fan bases in the NFL over the past three years, okay? They say Bengals, Eagles, Niners, Buffalo Bills, and the Jags. What would you say? Who would you say was your most loyal fan base during your career? I got to say that that list has to be from the last three years because the Bengals, I don't see that. Jacksonville, <laughs> I mean, they were on when we were there, but that's a very interesting list. Um, you asked me my, my uh, most consistent fan base. Um, most loyal. Most loyal. I would say Buffalo, I, I would say Buffalo's a strong one. You know, they, they were just getting back on it and really getting back to a good team. Um, I could say that, or the Jets. I'll say the Jets, because now they have an opportunity wow. to really do good things. So I think if you've been a Jet fan, even with the bag over your head, if you've been a Jet fan, you know, still showing up, then uh, I think that, uh, that that group of fans. And really quickly, who is the nightmare fan base you had to play in front of? The nightmare fan base. Um, I guess I have to say the Patriots. They have that false... Uh, sense of uh greatness you know they think they're out there putting things on and the way they talk to you in the stands is uh quite interesting so i'd have to say them not anymore malik jackson things have changed in the nfl enjoy retirement hopefully we have you back you're in la so i'm in la so we're gonna have to get together and do this next time um have fun with your grandmother Make sure you're probably taking a Zumba class later. Enjoy retirement. We love you. Congrats on an incredible career. Uh, Super Bowl champion Malik Jackson. We will be back tomorrow right here on Up and